Hello there, my name is Will Patillo. This Unity tutorial is going to be on the subject of dictionaries, and specifically a use case that really makes them useful. Here I've created an example that is simple enough to be able to cover in a short tutorial, but complex enough and, and set in such a way that using a dictionary really helps a lot. I have a, several boxes right here, and I can name one of them and say, if I name one of them and hit enter, then it jumps into the air. Hoppity. Uh, say if I pick a different one, then the green one jumps. Or red, magenta, and, and so on. Uh, if I type in something that does not match any of these colors, oh sorry, blue is a good one, um, say black, nothing. Um, Bob, nothing. Now, in addition to that, if I type one of these colors, uh, blue, or actually I haven't gone to yellow yet, um, and instead of pressing enter, I press the shift button, then I can rename yellow the box. Uh, and so I'm going to name it Jane. Press enter, okay. And now if I type in yellow, no good. But if I type in Jane, hoppity. Uh, I can also rename it back. So rename Jane the box. And I'm going to call it Steve. Now Jane won't work, but Steve will. And I can rename any of these boxes. Um, let's see, I can rename, sorry, I can rename blue, blue to be Bob, you can see Bob hops up now, and lastly, uh, if I hit the enter key, then all the default names are reset, so Bob doesn't work, neither does Jane, but blue, yellow, green, and so on all make those boxes hop. All right, so let's look at how we build all this. First, I'll go over the scene. I've got my camera. Uh, the event system just appeared on its own. Uh, it'll, it'll show up when you go through this. Directional light came with the project, it's fine. Uh, ground, this is just a, a plane. That's right here, a one by 1.25. Oh, uh, by the way, the main camera has a solid black background color. So this ground's just got a mesh collider. Uh, my cubes, I have an empty game object as their parent just to keep the hierarchy tidy. And inside here, I have a number of different cubes. I uh, just going from left to right. Uh, so this one on the far left, they're all the same. Uh, each one has a box collider, mesh renderer, uh, a rigid body with gravity turned on, and a hop script. And I've set the strength to be all the same. Uh, so let's take a look at this script first. And it has a strength. Uh, I had this default set to five, but it was barely noticeable. So I increased that to 300 in the inspector. I declared a rigid body in which I find a reference to it in the start function. So RB is get the rigid body that is attached to the same object as the hop script. And then I have a public function which will be called from a different script, which is why I'm making it public. And this just adds a force to the rigid body uh, in the upwards direction by the strength amount. Um, and I use force mode acceleration uh, because that way it doesn't matter what the mass of my rigid body is. Um, I'm not really taking that kind of level of physics into account here, and acceleration is kind of the simplest. I, I could leave this out, and since the mass is one, it'd, it'd be about the same, but that's, that's what that is. Okay, next, the real work of this script is happening in this Popmaster script, uh, which is just separate from everything else. I'm going to zero out its position. It doesn't really matter where it is. 
This has contains in it a canvas which has a input field. Uh, you can create an input field by just creating UI input field. And that creates this. It's got its own placeholder and text that was all built in. I didn't really modify anything here um, other than place place it inside the canvas. Uh, I set it down here so that when I'm in game view, it's nice and out of the way of everything else uh, and easy to see. Uh, and not up here because then it gets blocked by the jumping blocks. So no special components or modify changes to this other than the built-in Unity default values. All right. Lastly, let's take a look at this pop master script. Uh, it's got a few things assigned in the inspector. Uh, it has a reference to the hop component of each box, and it has a reference to the main input field, so that I, that's how I'm able to change the text. So let's go into the script here. Okay, um, so some things to note uh, up here in these definitions. Uh, in order to access the text on the text input, I need this using Unity Engine.ui. To make use of dictionaries, I need system.collections.generic. So, this little um, declarations here have set out a public, uh, an array of hop components called, I'm calling hoppers. And those are the ones that I uh, set the five and assign them here. And then a dictionary boxes. Uh, this dictionary contain contains a key and a value. Uh, that's what all dictionaries have in common. There are many different uh, types that you can use in both the key and the value. Um, the key can also be an int. Uh, value can be a game object. Actually, type the value can be pretty much anything because this hop is just a class that I created. So uh, it's pretty versatile there. Um, a little bit more restrictions in terms of what could be used as a key. This new dictionary string hop is just initializing it. And yeah, here's the reference to the main input, which again, I assigned in the inspector. Um, and I'll get to these later. So when the game starts, uh, I set the text. Uh, so that's why it says name a box right there because of this line. And then I create all the entries in the dictionary. Um, so I'm using this set default name so I can set them back later if I need to. Um, so I think at the start, the dictionary is empty. So I create a first entry and I set the key to red and the value to the first item in the hoppers array. The rest of it is reacting to input from the user. So let's see, if you ignore all this if else is renaming and just go straight to the meat of this whole script really, uh, is when input uh, get key down, key code, keypad enter. So when the user has pressed the enter key, then if the dictionary of boxes contains whatever is in this field when the user presses enter. So for example, right now, if I'm right at the beginning, uh, it says name a box and I press enter, uh, none of these are called the name a box. So that was a fail. But uh, if I type something in and then press enter, then it's gonna look at what I just entered right here and look through the dictionary to see if any of the keys match what I just entered. And if so, well, uh, then I know this is gonna be valid. I reference the uh, entry from the dictionary that of, of that key and call the uh, it's on hop. Uh, so this uh, 
boxes and then you know the key value right here this result this uh, will resolve to a value so if I typed in red actually I think that'll get this to make a little more sense if I so I type, if, if this is red red then boxes red that becomes hoppers zero and so it's it would be the same as if I had written in uh, hopper zero dot on on hop, um, and then you know change the text to say that. Uh, so calling this causes the red box to jump, and right here is where you can kind of see some of the value of using a dictionary rather than some other method, because otherwise I would need to uh, you know look at the look at the text and then maybe have a uh, switch statement and for the case red then uh, it would be box zero dot on hop uh, and I, I would have to keep and then you know for case blue it would be box two on hop and and so on all the way across and i'd have to keep track through the code uh, which of these is which rather than just setting a default and forgetting about it um, so through the use of the dictionary i this could be anything and if it's present then it will find it and call the on hop for the correct object um, so Anyway, though, going, going, moving on, if they've hit enter and the main input.txt is not contained in the dictionary, then they are told to try again. This next bit is the renaming. So if instead of pressing key, uh, keypad enter, they've pressed the right shift key, then first I check to see if the boxes contains uh, whatever's in the main input field then it sets a boolean uh, this one here is renaming to true and since i'm going to be messing around with what's in this main input.txt box uh, i'm i'm going to save this found value so say if it's green then old name is going to be become green that way main input.txt is freed up to become something else uh, so right here it becomes rename green the box. So now that's in the is renaming state, when the player presses enter, instead of checking to see if the box contains that key and you know maybe jumping or maybe not, it instead uh, adds a new item to the dictionary with the text that the user has just entered in now so such as so if they've had green and now they're renaming it to herbert and they press enter then this will be herbert this turns into the value um, of whatever it was uh box three so this becomes uh the value hot uh hoppers three and so now we have a new entry of Herbert that is set to this box. Uh, and now that we've added a new one, we can remove, we can remove the uh, the box with the with the key of green. Uh, set is renaming to false, so that if we hit enter again, it'll be searching for this portion and change the instructional text to name a box. Oh, uh, lastly, one other item that I included in here is just a safety feature. Um, so if they're renaming it, so if, say they change blue and they rename it to Bob, and then they type in Bob and rename it again, and also call it Bob again, um, then that's going to create a problem because we're going to be adding a box with the name 
you can't have duplicate keys. That is is the issue. Um, if you had you know a red and red 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 or multiple uh, items in a list with the same key name, then that's Unity is going to throw an error. <coughs> but you never know what the user is going to type. So if they try to rename the same box with the same name twice in a row, uh, then it finds that here and tells them that the name's taken and then just gets out uh, without trying to add that. Um, so actually, if I see that in action, <coughs> if I take blue, rename blue the box, Bob, name a box, Bob, I'm going to rename Bob the box, try to call it Bob again, name taken, try again. And then the last item, just to make things complete, is the get key down, key code escape. Then I tell the user that I've reset the box names, set default names, call that function again. This is the same function that I called on start. And I call uh, boxes.clear. Um, this is kind of, this is redundant in, when it's called from start, but uh, essential when I'm uh, resetting the names here because um, if I didn't, if I didn't clear, then let's say I had red, magenta, blue, green, yellow, and then I immediately, right at the start of the game, hit escape and rename them, then this would just add another five boxes to it. So there'd be 10 of them and two with each key, and then you'd get that duplicate key error. So clear it first to make sure that the dictionary is empty and then recreate with the original list. And that is the entirety of this example. I hope you found it useful as a uh, just a way of um, really illustrating how dictionaries work and how you can make use of them. Uh, it was also, in addition to dictionaries, uh, covered a use of the making use of the main input field. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and if you have anything else that you would like to see in Unity, feel free to ask in the comments, or if there's anything in this tutorial that didn't make sense, also feel free to ask. And until next time, this is Will Patillo, signing out.